and welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us um, for this afternoon's masterclass. I'm Kerry Brox from the Institute for Learning and Performance. And just a quick intro, with ILP, our members really do matter and, and also with the wider L&D community. And it's really important that over the last few months, given that we're all going through this challenge together, that we try and um, change or pivot, which is the current word, of some of the things and services we provide for our members. So we've switched from running our face-to-face -face programs to these fortnightly online masterclasses. So today is actually our 10th masterclass. So all of our members have got access to the recordings on our learning um, and development resources page on our website. Um, and we've already have um, enough masterclasses lined up to the rest of the year, to the, I think to the beginning of November. So thank you to Bill Gerard for organizing those for us. Today, um, our facilitator is Gerald Porschman. He's been a big supporter of ILP and myself over the last um, 13 years, and is actually one of the founders of ILP when we first got started. Initially, there was three of us, um, Steve Hartley, um, Gerald and myself. So he's hung around for the long haul, so I'm really grateful of that. Um, and he's also always been very generous with sharing his tips and ideas, and I'm sure today you're gonna enjoy the session and um, learn a lot from him. Just uh, most of you should be familiar with Gerald because he was actually MC at how many conferences, Gerald? About four? Six. <laughs> four or five. <laughs> Counting your fingers there. Um, so over the last two and a half years, Gerald's sort of been dabbling in the area of um, producing videos and YouTube. And he just told me before that he has now over 8 million views of his YouTube channel. He also has close to 85,000 subscribers. Um, and this is pretty amazing given that it's only been a couple of years since he started. So I'm sure he's doing something right. So I'm gonna hand over to Gerald, um, who's gonna share some, some really good tips with us this afternoon. Thank you, Gerald. Thanks, Kerry, and thanks, Bill, also. It's, um, it's always good to do a session like this. You know, normally we do a session like this and it's live face to face. Um, but I guess the challenge now in the last six months for a lot of you people and uh, including myself, is it how do we transition into something like doing Zooms? But also, I know it's not only the Zoom that you transition to, but I get asked, not all the time, but occasionally people say, man, what is your setup? Like, what have you got? It must have cost you an absolute bomb to set something up like this. So what I want to do is I want to step through just a nice, easy, probably step-by-step, -step, it's not a formula, but it's a step-by-step -step process of what I have in my setup, what I use, and how much it probably costs. Now, one of the things that I um, that I I like to do is that during the session, obviously you have questions. I'm not one of these people that likes to leave the questions at the end because right at the end you get to ask the questions. Only two people get to ask. You don't get to ask your burning questions. So if you do have something to ask, I might ask either Bill or Kerry to monitor the chat or even um, have a look at the people who are waving or got thumbs up to say, I have to ask something because I want you to interject and ask me the questions. I won't be looking, I have a separate screen over here, which brings up all the chats um, and I'll show you that screen, how it works. So I took photos of everything of how my setup is. So you get to see it from where I'm sitting here as well. So if you do have a question, interject, ask the question because I guess it's easier to have them answered as we go along. The other thing I've got for you is to, um, I noticed some of you got pens in your hand, you've got notepapers, and some of you are savants where you can remember every single word of what I'm saying and you'll use it against me in evidence in court one day. But apart from that, you will, uh, you will get all the PowerPoint presentation that we have here today. If we have time, <coughs> excuse me, if we have time, I said to Kerry, I might also run through a process of how do I then get my videos with all the equipment and then I put the production together and then how do I upload it to a YouTube channel, and then how do I grow my YouTube channel? Um, and by the way, I'm not a marketer. So when, I'm, when I say I'm not a marketer, I let everything go organically, meaning I, I started the videos, um, I would say two and a half years ago in reference or in pleading with my father. My father was pleading to me that he wanted to see me because I'm here in Queensland, he's in New South Wales and I didn't get to see him often. And he said to me, I don't ever get to see you. I'd like to see you more often. I said, mate, I'll make you a promise. You will see me every, every Tuesday. And then that, from that point on, I started calling my little YouTube channel Tuesdays Tutorials, which is I would show him things on how things would work, camera equipment, 
um, fancy apps on a, on a phone or cool websites. And that was the name of it, cool apps and fancy websites and other stuff. And then it transitioned to, he said to me, well, now that you're doing that, I never get to drink with you. So how can I have a drink with you? Hence the whiskey bar. So every Tuesday on my Tuesday's tutorial, and you will notice if any of you ever jumped into my YouTube channel and I do lives every Saturday called Waffles and Whiskey. Waffles is me talking. As you can tell, I waffle a lot. And the whiskey part is my father and I cheersing him, the great man, and we all go cheers, Rudy. So that's become an institution. And I don't know why people are watching because it's just me having a chat to my father and people are voyeurs liking to know what I'm talking to my father about. It's kind of like that, who's read the book Tuesdays with Maury? Um, and that's the kind of thing that we did. Yeah, what a great book that was. And that was the kind of thing that we thought we'd do is that I'll just have a Tuesday with him. We'd have a chat and so many people um, would just jump on and they would just go, love your stuff, man. But it's really, I'm not talking to them. I'm talking to my father. So like I said, if you have questions, jump into it. I've got some of the equipment already sitting down here. Now I'll go through some of this. This Canon ADD, uh, sorry, this Canon um, uh, 8, uh, XA20, this one here, I used to use, Kerry, do you remember when I did the the live or the shows at ILP? We had three of these cameras. Each one of these cameras was two and a half thousand dollars. So we had three of those. This is the camera that I sometimes used when I do my, um, when I do my uh, shows, as an example, I might use this and record it. And this is the Canon 80D. So if you say that really quickly, Canon 80D, it's, uh, it sounds not familiar to some, but it's, it's a great camera, but very expensive, two and a half thousand dollars. I have two of these and I'll show you that. This little GoPro here, I just use when I do my travel vlogs. I would use this 90% of the time. So I would use this also when I'm doing my recordings. And then of course you've got the trusty iPhones that sits in front of me. Hopefully it doesn't ring or go off uh, when I'm doing this, but that there costs, when you know what the cost is, you probably have a Samsung and you have something else. Now, the camera that I'm using at the moment is a Logitech camera, and I'll put, the, uh, I'll put all the specs up. You'll get to see it all. It's a Logitech camera, costs about $200. So I've ditched all of this stuff here. It's all gone. I don't use this anymore. It is now just here for show, and I have three of these. I have two of these, and I don't use it anymore. I have two GoPros that I only use when I do my travel vlog. So I did, for example, Kerry knows this, that I... Um, in the last nine days, I went round Queensland uh, with a good buddy of mine and we had a GoPro and we had a drone and we did a, a video basically called This Is Queensland, just showcasing Queensland to the Victorians because they don't get to go out. So we get to do that. And uh, but we were supposed to be in Mongolia. So this time, right now, I should not be here. I should be in Mongolia, Russia and Siberia riding a bike. But because of something's going on, we did it around Queensland. So what I want to do, I do want to start off by showing, I want to share my screen. Hopefully, I know you'll all get to see this. It does work, work pretty well. I'll get to see some of you, not all of you, because I guess uh, the screen isn't big enough to see everyone. I know I can do that. I can push my screen over to here, but then that would be rude, me looking at this and trying to talk to you. So what I've got here, I just want to get the complete guide to getting started. The objective of today is going to be very simple. What equipment do I need? How do I get started? How much is it going to cost? And how committed are you to getting something up, up and running in the next days? And I'm sure that some of you have dabbled in video. I'm sure that it's probably got to the stage where you thought it's all too hard. I don't know how to do it. I don't know why I should be doing something like this. Let me give you just something as a simple example here. This, um, I want to show you this here. How much does it cost? This is a film that was put out, Tarnation in 2003. It was a documentary. Um, this was totally done of a budget. This is a documentary that has won awards. This was done of a total budget of 218, so $220 all using the iMovie software and using the person's old Super 8 footage and some of their VHS videotape. So if people are saying to me, oh, Gerald, it's gonna cost me an absolute bomb to start making a video, putting a production together. I don't have the time or the energy. What you do need is you need the content. And I'll go through 
maybe what my formula is to getting all that done. So I want to have, I want to, I want to show you this. So this is an example of um, my setup here. We're going to look at the cameras, the microphone that I use, the monitor that I have, tripods that I've got, SD cards are always important. I'll show you what they are all about. Uh, batteries, how many of those you need. Extension cords, you can't have enough extension cords. A teleprompter I want to show you. Uh, the desk that I've got here, editing software, and of course the studio that I might be sitting in. You'll see that what I'm using here um, in that photo there is that I have a lower third um, of a banner of um, say my Instagram page, my Twitter account, and also where you can contact me. For those who are interested, I might just stop this share for a second and just talk to you face to face. But if those who are interested, Kerry, can you just confirm the date? Is it the 27th or the 28th of October where we'll be doing something in at, at ILP or now it's called BCC, the Brisbane, um, uh, what is it? The, the Brisbane Business Centre, isn't it? So can you just confirm what date that is? We'll be doing a live stream and showing you how to use a live stream, uploading it into YouTube by using a software that I use, which is called OBS, Open Broadcast System. And I'll be doing that live. Is, is that right, Kerry, on the 27th? 27th. 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 Your mic was off too, Kerry, by the way. Hit the space bar and when you get to talk. <laughs> I forgot about that tip before. <laughs> yeah. I was unmuted, then I muted myself. Um, yes, the 20th, Tuesday, the 27th of October. At October. The okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So Tuesday, 27th of October. And again, I would suggest that, yes, come along to that. If you want to learn how to, you know, right from where I'm sitting here, Gerald, well, show me how you go live then. And we're going to go live and I will send you a link and you will see on your devices, you will see me go live and you'll be able to comment and chat just like you see those people on YouTube when they do go live. Okay, let me just bring this up again. So that's our, that's our setup part here. Um, this is what it looks like. Uh, if I'm standing behind the TV monitor, you'll see the TV monitor has a very small camera. <laughs> um, I'm sure you can see that. That is the Logitech. I think it's a, it's the C922. We'll have a look at it. It'll come up in a moment. But I just took that this afternoon. I thought I'll take a photo. You can see my laptop is on the right hand side there. And behind that, you can see the microphone. I'll talk about how much the microphone is, where you can get these and how, how efficient these are. I mean, have a look at this. When I can just move just the microphone out of the way. I mean, I'm looking like I'm, you know, Joe Rogan. I'm looking like Ben Shapiro, somebody that obviously has a studio here. And yet for such a cheap amount of money, and I'm talking ridiculously cheap, um, you don't have to go too far in spending it. This is another setup. This is now, you can see me in the background taking a photo of where I sit. So in the background of that, you can see that I've got two chairs sitting there. Sometimes I'll have a person who might be waiting to be interviewed. They might sit there. You can see there's a little blue ring on the camera that's above the TV. The TV is the one directly in front of me. So it's quite large. I get to see it. And the laptop is to the left-hand side. So all I've done is I've screened the laptop to the TV. And you can do that. You know you've done it. If you've been into any corporate center, you've been to any training facility, you plug your laptop in and it booms either to a, a data projector or it booms to a large screen TV. So that's it when I'm sitting in front. That's how you would see it there. This is another view, maybe from lower down. So I've got my, my trusty Volkswagen. There's a big story to that. Won't tell it today, but I've got the, the trusty Volkswagen there. Um, I don't have, you'll see there's a little iPad sitting there. That is what I'm going to be showing you on the 27th also. I control everything from that iPad that needs to be changed. Everything. Um, I won't bring it up now. You can write this down, but it's called Touch Portal. T-O-U-C-H-P-O-R-T-A-L. And watch what Touch Portal does. Kerry, if you remember, we, we do everything from that screen. So I would touch the screen and it would change the scenes for me. So this is a magic piece of machinery. In fact, if you watch any of my lives that are on at Saturday morning, um, 7 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, you'll see that I have that in front of me and I get to design or, or work with everything there. And this is the last shot, really. Um, you can see on the right-hand side, I've got a desk there, um, which also reminds me, that little piece of paper that's sitting there, I have a guy coming to purchase my motorbike um, at 4.30. So that's, uh, that's just a nice, great little reminder. So there you'll have the desk. Uh, you'll also have the TV, the monitor, that's my house. 
uh, part of the house, basically. And then this packs up and goes away in 10 minutes. It just needs to be packed away. So let's talk about cameras on your smartphone now. So I wanna, I wanna have a look at, and I'll, I'll shut this screen down because I want to show you that what I've got here is uh, probably just an easy example, and I'll move these out of the way once I'm done with them. Some people like to use their mobile phone. I have no problem with using a mobile phone. In fact, this thing here that I'm showing you now, you'll be able to get on eBay or you'll be able to get this. I think I bought this on wish list. And this is a marvelous piece of machinery, which is, if I can show you, your phone slips in here and then it sits on a tripod. And now I've got a very sturdy base that I'll be able to use. And it has little hot shoes where I can put my, um, so for example, here, I've got one that sits my GoPro on top if I needed that. Or on this side here is where I have my microphone that I can hold and talk to and it's very sturdy. And with this on top of using a tripod, it is an amazing piece. And this here, um, I think $29.99. So this was bought from wish.com. The only issue that I have with wish.com, I think it took about nine weeks to get here. <laughs> Uh, so always keep that in mind. Anything that you purchase uh, from an overseas site, like if, I know there's Amazon Australia, but a lot of these come from the US. Um, if you get one of these, it's going to take a month of Sundays to get there. That'll be on the site. I'll show you what to get there. Um, what would you, somebody asked about what would you do search for Wish? Just search um, in wish.com uh, mobile phone holder. And it holds also the mini iPad. So it's quite, it's, it's quite large actually. So people that use this, this is a great little device to use. You've all got one of these selfie sticks. These are great to use, but I wanna also show you that if you're the sort of person that needs to be able to read stuff off here, or you wanna change the things that uh, are performed on here, like your background or a green screen, I'll show you those also because it becomes very cheap and easy to be using something. So where Kerry's sitting at the moment, and I see a lot of you also, I see, I think Marie, I see Con and I see, let me, let me see. So Marie and Con, I see that have a background. So they've got a background, which is just a simple Zoom virtual setting, isn't it? That's all that is. The same thing will happen with this, only it comes a lot clearer. So I'll show you that. And also Malcolm, you've got one of those backgrounds on too. So the difference there between my, my background is mine isn't a virtual screen, mine is wallpaper. And I'll show you how much those cost as well, because you want to be able to say with the setup, Gerald, how much is all this? So the only thing you'll have to write down is the prices because I haven't got all those down. So I'm Gerald, to... Gerald, speak. speak. It's a, a, there's a question here uh, from Vivian about uh, interested in the benefit of the standing microphone versus a lapel microphone that moves with you. Right. So for example, if I'm doing just a piece to camera, this is called a piece to camera. Uh, this here would seem like for me the best option. The reason why is that I know that I can speak into this. I know there's no battery that's going to be uh, associated with this. None at all. I can go for nine hours with this. In fact, I did a Zoom the other day. God help me. It was a full day session um, and I used this. If I was to use the lavalier mic or the lapel mic, I'm going to show you one of those in a moment. Uh, the fear is, is that you're going to lose battery power, maybe. Um, I know they do last a while. Some, some of them do last a good eight hours. But what if, what if? There's always that what if. So that's the only benefit to using something like a standalone. But if you're, uh, if, if you're the sort of person who likes to roam around and move around and you're on stage and somebody is filming you, that is the best thing to have is a lab mic. You can hook the lab mic to your mobile phone and you can video from the back of the room. So... The benefit there is that, of course, um, for movement around, use the lav mic. But for this sort of session here today, I only want to be sitting. I don't think it'd be appropriate for me to be putting something on. And a lot of you are using either your, um, your laptop mic. Some of you might be wearing a lav mic. Others might be having a microphone. I don't know. But this is comfortable for me. And if I want it out the way... I can just move it out the way. In fact, it folds right down.
and adjust to the position that I want. The only thing I have to be careful of is when I move it out the way, of course, the sound is going to get minimal. But you can obviously hear now that you can probably still hear me, but I sound like a million miles away, correct? Yep. So gr great question. That's the benefit of it. We have another question here, if you don't mind. Uh, sure. and it, it's uh, somebody, um, Con noticed that um, in the pictures they were showing, there didn't seem to be any uh, lighting equipment at all. None. Do, you use, do you use artificial lighting? How do you light things? Well, the thing, the thing is, that I don't know if you could have seen it, but the light that I'm using comes directly from the house. So I don't know if you saw it. If I go back, let me just go back. You will see, um, just quickly, you will see maybe this photo here. No, not that one there. Can you see that? You've got the door on the left-hand side and then you've got double French doors on the right-hand side. So that there is giving me natural light. Absolutely. Gone are the days, I think, where you used to be able to have to say, I need a, a setup. And I will show you that setup. The setup that we used to have at Kerry's, remember those days, Kerry, setting up the lights, putting the camera, getting everything done. It was just, it took us an hour and a half to set up. You want a good camera. And the, this Logitech here just brightens everything up. It just makes it great. The only issue I have with Zoom is that I can't adjust the camera settings while I'm in Zoom. So if it, all of a sudden it gets dark, or, the, or I've got a, sorry, I do have an overhead light. So I've got an overhead, it's just the kitchen light, but I, well, sorry, the, the lounge room light. It'd be interesting to know what it would look like when I turn it off. If you can remind me at the end, uh, Bill, turn off your light, Gerald, let's see what it looks like. I'm sure it doesn't make too much of a difference because I'm using the street or the outside light coming from outside. I hope that makes sense. So I want to, um, we just go into our screen again here. So this one here, the teleprompter, you might want to have a, a look at this one. It's only available right now for uh, iOS devices and it's called I can present and what it does is it allows you to enter your text here this is your mobile phone setting for example enter your text in here add a background in and you sit in front here reading your text and it looks exactly like that you would if you were using a professional teleprompter it's a great little thing I think this is about nine dollars nine dollars from only iOS um, it's not available on Google Play so I think it's just uh, the app store in iOS. Then you have this one here, you can get, so you can see what this, this lady's got. There's an option here called Chroma Key. This is not a teleprompter. It's just if you want to be able to film, if you're not using Zoom and you wanna be able to film, but you need a green screen with this. So this here is a free app and it's available on both of the devices, Android and iOS. The software that I used to use, I'm, should I say I'm, I'm embarrassed to say it, but probably not. With my iPad, in fact, in fact, Barry and I, we just did nine days around Queensland. All the editing, all the editing, all the videoing was all done on the iPad. The whole thing was done on the iPad. So we would film live every night using the iPad. And we also use the lav mic for that one. We'd use an iPad and we would edit the whole thing the next morning and we would do that on iMovie software. And again, that is available um, if you have a, an iPhone. If you say, well, I don't have an iPhone, I have the, um, the Android version, then you use the software here called Kind Master or Kinney Master. Very simple to use. You don't have to use what I use. I use Adobe Premiere Pro and for some of the fancy stuff, I use Adobe After Effects. So they're the two that I think if you want to have a look at, use the iMovie option or use the software here, which is the uh, Kinney Master. There's also, if you do own a GoPro, GoPro has a very good studio. The software studio is just simply called GoPro Studio. Um, I'm not sure how many people have a GoPro. Some people will try to import their footage directly from GoPro into a software program like I do with um, Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, suggestion is, is you always go to the, the official site. It's a free download. Once you've bought your camera, this is a free download and they do terrific footage, um, I think scenes where it can cut it up and it makes it look fantastic. So they're the three that I would probably use 
if you don't want to go to the expense of using something like I do. But when I talk about the expense, for those that are coming on the, 20, on the 27th, 27th? Yes, 27th. Those that are coming on the 27th, I'm going to show you the free software called OBS, which is Open Broadcast System. I'm going to show you that software, how free it is, and how you can go live and do all the fancy stuff all the professionals use in a TV studio, because that's what they use in a smaller, in a smaller sense. Like um, I'm using it in a smaller sense. They obviously have a, um, a studio setting where they have lots of operators, but I use it particularly just to do my own show and I'm sitting here doing all the controls on my own. Yes, it takes practice, but it can be done and easily done. Now, you're, some of you will be familiar with, with this sort of stuff here, Canva. Um, if you're not using Canva, use the other one on the other side. I've got to call it uh, Photo, Photo Fun IA or Photo Funia. Um, that just gives you, I've used this in many of my thumbnails that I use, and I'll talk about thumbnails, how important they are when you're putting that up into your YouTube channel. So I'll give you an example of what they'll look like. Gerald? Yes. Gerald, so, a couple, couple of questions. You, go for it. One of them uh, was from Marie asking, uh, can you uh, only use the iPad or can you use a MacBook Air, Air or Pro? Uh, absolutely, yeah, MacBook Air Pro, any computer. I just didn't want to travel um, on a, you know, on a motorbike, uh, grabbing my, my laptop. So the only option that I thought I wanted to do was, uh, was grab an iPad and uh, Barry had his iPad and we would airdrop images to each other. So he would take some photos. I would download the photos from GoPro onto my iPad and then I would airdrop my photos to his phone. Or if he didn't have airdrop because it's iOS to iOS, I would simply just send it by messenger. I'll go, here's, here's something we did here out at uh, you know, Nebo. Man, it's in Messenger. But because we could airdrop, and then he would have the footage, and he would download it, and then he would use um, the iMovie. And we've also got a, a request. Could you just go over the teleprompter again, just very quickly? The teleprompter, I'm going to go one step further. So okay. the te what a teleprompter is, uh, just raise hands. Don't need to um, speak, but just raise hands. Who knows what a teleprompter is? Yeah, I'm going, to, I'm going to show you the teleprompter that I use that's cost $1,200. But I use it because I do these quite often. It's something that I have, uh, I have two of them now. So when I have a guest sometimes, I'll have them read off a teleprompter. I'll have me read off a teleprompter. And it's all controlled by a remote control, which tells me I can go fast, slow, stop, pause, backwards. It, it increases the font size. So it all is controlled by this. The teleprompter is sitting here. I'll show you that in a moment when we get to it. But the, what a teleprompter is, is when you use it on your phone, it's quite ingenious that you can set the speed so that when, uh, and that's the only thing with the iPhone one, is that when you set the speed, it'll just be at that speed forever. Whereas when I'm using my professional one, I can stop it and start it so I can catch up to it or I can slow it down when it needs be. So I'll go one step further than that. But um, the best thing to do is to download the app. You get a free trial of it. Just download it, try it out, and see how it works for you because it's, it's the easiest thing to do. The hardest thing to do is to act or sound natural when you're reading off a teleprompter because some people read teleprompters like they're reading every word. Yeah, if that makes sense. Any other questions on that one, Bill? I know we're good now. Oh, somebody just did. Ricky, I saw your hand went up for a second. If you have a question, throw that in quickly. Hi, I just if I can ask you, um, what's the uh, app called for the teleprompter? What's the, sorry? The app called for the teleprompter. If I was to download one for the phone? Oh, for the phone, that was called, uh, it's, it's called I Can Present. Okay, thank you. I-C-A-N, so one word, I Can Present. Yeah, check that one out. Yeah, I only just used it. Uh, like I've always had it on my phone and iPad, um, and it's never had any glitches. Um, but yes, like I said, it's not on um, on Android devices. Any other question we got sitting would in it, there? Would no. it be the same for um, the PC? No, PC will be very different. What you can do is that you can download a um, teleprompter. Just type in teleprompter for your PC, and what it will do is you'll come up with those options. Problem is is your camera's up there and you're reading off the screen here. 
So it looks like that you're speaking or reading like this when even the teleprompter is running. So it's, or you're looking down. But when I show you my one, totally different system. Yeah. I actually look professional when I read my teleprompter. People just go, wow, how do you remember all your lines? I can read. I went to school. That's how. Hope that makes sense. All right, don't forget, keep asking those questions. Now, if you want music, um, some of you will be familiar with this. I subscribe to, you might want to write this down. I subscribe to a music site called Artlist. A-R-T-L-I-S-T, artlist.io. It's $15 a month and I get all the music that I want royalty free to use any of my channels. Or you can simply go to Fiverr for five bucks, ask them to put you together a... Um, a short music clip. They'll do that. Pond five, Pond five. I think I pay ten dollars a month, and that gives me a whole heap of things: music, videos, still images. Wonderful. There's also video blocks. So of all those, that's just for music. If you want it that, so that's giving you a kind of price range. Or the other option is is you just download something from the internet, say from iTunes or from Spotify and then wait for the, I don't know, the FBI or the federal police to knock on your door and say, we're taking you off and can't you for, to jail for using someone else's stuff. Good luck, have fun with that, if you know what I mean. All right, when you're getting into your writing of the script, one of the things that I think is the hardest thing to do is storyboarding. Some of you will be very good at it, how do I storyboard? This is what I do. I come up with a creative concept. I have an idea in my head. So I might want to talk about something that's important. I'll think about a title. I'll work with the title. And then I'll go, right, now I know the concept, the title. I then take the footage of what it is because B-roll, which is, not the, which is the, the stuff like if we're looking at this now, if I was to then grab this whole Zoom call here, while I'm doing this, I would add B-roll on top of it so it just doesn't look like you're looking at a PowerPoint presentation and a bunch of people on the side. I would organize my videos and images into albums. So that, what that means is in, say, your folder list on your computer, I would have something like, man gets bitten by dog. That would be the folder. In there, I would have images, then I would have GoPro footage, then I would have drone footage, and then I would have raw video. So I know exactly what came from which camera. So then I go, I took that with the, with the GoPro camera, I can then organize it. And then I just go ahead and create the movie one by one. But that I will show you if you're coming on the 27th, because obviously this is more about the equipment, the actual uploading and putting it together is where the magic happens. So I want to ask this question here. There are, I do get, I do get this. Kerry, do you remember who that person was that we did an interview? Can you see who that person is? Um, I remember Bill, um, Phil somebody. I can't think of his last name. Bill, yeah, I can't remember either. So uh, Cro Cro Crockford. That's it. Bill Thank Crockford. you. Yep. What well, a memory. What a memory. So I've got a question here. Let's get serious. Who here, and, and I know this thing says who wants their own show because even this, in a way, is a show. I'm producing something which has got, this is great because it's got two-way content, I can speak to you, but generally when you're putting a show together, it's just you speaking to the camera and inviting people to listen and have them comment back via chat. So if you are serious about this, stick around, because, and I'll say here, let's talk further, because when you do come on the, the 27th, I think, it's one of those things that you just go, it is easy to do, I just need to commit. So this here is a setup that I did for a, a lady, a yoga teacher, and she was doing a spiritual course out at um, Mullumbimby. This is about a year and a half ago, and she just wanted her things um, videoed. And as you can see, I'm using this camera here. I don't know if you can see me in the, in the screen, but I'm using this camera here, the Canon XA80. You can also see I have got um, a tripod and I've got on the top of the camera, you can see I've got the lavalier mic sitting on there and Cara would be, we would be wearing one on her. And you can have a look at the screen. That is the cropped up shot that we have. There's no lights. 
There's no lighting on her. We just use the natural light. And like I've got there, remember, you can do this all on your own. You don't need to go. In fact, I had a woman call me yesterday. This is a true story. She called me yesterday. One guy was going to charge her $6,000 to produce one video. And I said, tell me you're not going to pay that. Like seriously, you're not going to pay that. If, if you want anything, I'll loan you my teleprompter and you can do it all on your own. Like seriously, you don't need to pay that sort of money. And the reason why I wanted to do this is when my mother passed away about 15 years ago, I wanted to make a video for her. And I went to a studio on the Gold Coast and I said, I want to put a video from a mum. How much will it cost? I want to do all the talking. It will just be piece to camera. And the guy at that stage said $15,000. And I went, I've got to learn how to do this myself. And here we are. I know this is years ago, but, uh, but here we are. And I know it took me probably seven or eight years to start doing it. Um, I never ended up doing that video for my mother, which is, you know, breaks my heart to do that. But now that I have this skill, I go, it can be that easy to do that. So here it is. This is the Logitech C922. You're going to need one camera. Simple as that, $200. And I would show it to you, but it's sitting on top of the camera itself on what I'm using at the moment. Again, $200. Problem now is that because of um, the situation that we're in, you can hardly buy one of these because everyone went out and bought themselves a webcam because Zoom was such a big thing. And if you go to Officeworks or you go to JB Hi-Fi or Harvey Norman, they're going to say, sorry, ran out. So your best chance is, I did see that this was today. In fact, I took this photo. Um, it's on eBay for $198. Again, but eBay is going to take you about two weeks, three weeks to get there. So now the two things that I've got here. So you'll see this one here on the right-hand side. This is the boom arm. In fact, I bought, I bought this one. And there's the microphone to prove it. I bought this one. And the microphone's fine. It's actually really good. I just like using my, my own special mic, which I've had forever. Um, you can buy this in silver or in gold. I think I've got the fancy gold one. This here, um, $45. Oh, come on, people, $45. Like, if you can't afford $45, then you shouldn't be doing this at all. But you'll see on the other side, the other side, $800. For these. Now, as Kerry knows, when we were doing the interviews at ILP, we would have sometimes two or three guests. And so I had three of these. So now thinking about the whole thing set up again, you can buy, and I should have put a link up on here, but if you go to wish.com and you ask for, and you type in dual lavalier microphone, you will get one that's dual to another person and I think it's under $100. And so ideally now, rather than spending $800, you can use one of these for $45 or the dual microphone for about $100. It is, it is wired, but the cord is that long that I could be across the room. So meaning normally you'd be sitting on a couch or you'd be sitting opposite a person or here like I am at the table and that person would then be hooked up as well. So Barry and I were using a lot of those when we went on our trip. Um, here, I've got a monitor. You can buy this monitor. I do have one of these monitors. I used to use it. I don't anymore. It's sitting carrying dust, but now I just use my TV, as you can see with this picture over here. Tripods. The cheapest tripod that I could find is just this one here. This one here was about $12 and I got this second hand off. Um, it was on Facebook marketplace. Don't go spending stuff like that expensive stuff. In fact, I wish I could show you my setup here down the bottom because there's no tripod holding up the camera. The camera's on the TV. I'm using a, for now I'm using a bedside table and I'm using some boxes over here. How are we going for questions, Bill? We've got some coming in. We just got one. Um, what is the quality of such an inexpensive, inexpensive mic? Uh, such an inexpensive, which one? What is the quality of such an inexpensive mic? Weight? Mic. Mic. Oh, well, well, this is the quality. I don't know what this is like, what you're listening to. It sounds good to me. 
And if I was to lower my voice deeper, you would get a really booming sound. <laughs> something like that. So what's the quality? You get something like this. Ideally, um, and you might want to do this. If you go into my YouTube channel, I'll show you where that is. Um, I can't play it on here. The sound quality through the laptop to you is totally different. But we were using the lav mic, um, which is $800 worth. But that, of course, has got a better range. Um, and the quality is just the same. It depends. The, the issue is, is do you want video quality or audio quality? For me, audio quality far surpasses video quality. People will put up with a bad video. They'll put up with it. What they want is good audio. No one wants to hear, no one wants to hear something that's this far away. It's too hard to understand. Although you can hear me, and if that was my laptop, that would be here, and it still would be annoying to you. You can still hear me, but it's annoying. So you can see once I bring it closer to me, the sound quality improves greatly. So this, this microphone here was actually a, um, a Harvey Norman uh, microphone, which was $62. I know the one that I showed you before was 45. I kind of like that one. I don't know why it's, I've had it forever. $62, that's the mic there. Check it out, if it doesn't, I mean, that one works fine. I just didn't want to use it. I didn't like the gold. Oh, it's a bit weird. Thanks. Kind of weird. Yeah. All right, let's just uh, move with the, the, we've got the tripod was the last one. And then we go to, uh, yeah, SD cards. You only need an SD card if you're using a camera such as this one here, the ATD or the Canon XA80. They take SD cards, they last a bomb, like a long time, um, and you simply take the SD card out of your camera and you pop it into your laptop and you download the footage. The beauty about doing something like Zoom is you don't need anything like that. I've got my camera set up, it's going straight to the, to the computer, and I'm sure Bill or Kerry has hit the record button and you've now recorded this. It's just brilliant. So they've made things so much easier uh, in today's world as opposed to what we used to have to do, you know, five, ten, you know, even even five years ago, three, four, five years ago. You're going to need a bomb of these batteries, or you do what Gerald does, is you have a case of. Now, why do I need batteries? If I'm using my lav mic, I'll need batteries. So I just have a series of eight batteries in here, and I also have, you know, what this is. This is just a simple um, battery charger. So you're either going to spend every so often a whole bunch of batteries. Don't do that. Buy yourself some, you know, energizer batteries so you can recharge them. It's got to be a hell of a lot easier. I did mention, I did mention tripods before. I forgot this one. I'll just close the screen here. This is what Barry and I used on our trip the whole way. Now this here, that there is just a GoPro clip. That's as tight as anything. So I'll, I would hit that on the car. So this would sit here. I don't know if you can see that. And that would sit there. The GoPro sits on top and that's going nowhere. That's going nowhere. This, cl this clamp here. Oh, I must do my exercises. This clamp here is great. And this one here I just got from eBay again. Um, the clamp with this um, nozzle here, with the clip up here so your GoPro fits in. I think it was about $80. But again, you don't have to spend that much, not if you're carrying your GoPro. GoPros nowadays, these things are amazing with the stability that you have. I've gone through sand, the car is doing this, and at the footage on here, it was like National Geographic, if not better. <laughs> you know I just made that up, don't you? All right, so we're on to batteries. After batteries, you're going to, have, you're going to want cords, only reason why, if you have a think about what I've got here now, is that I need a cord from my laptop to the PowerPoint. I need a cord from the TV um, to the uh, to the power power board. I also need cords to go from the laptop to the TV. I think that would be about it. So three cords for now. If I'm going out on site, so over to Kerry's and I'm using three or four cameras, totally different. For every camera, I need a cord. For every TV, I need a cord. For every piece of equipment, I need a cord. Until the day that Elon Musk comes out with something and says, everything is wireless now. 
So this teleprompter here is 12 to 1500. In fact, I'll, uh, this is, it's quite heavy, so I'll shut this down so you can have a look. at the teleprompter here. So that's the same one that you just saw in the picture. You see that I have a camera in the back here. So it's one of these cameras here, the, Can the Canon ATD. So for those who know a little bit about how these work, this is an amazing piece of machinery. I love using this. And the reason why when I turn it around, you have a glass in there. So if I lift it up, you should be able to see you in there soon. There you are. There you are. It's got a glass in there. It's got a, it's very heavy. It's got a leveler here, and that's where I sit my iPad. Here we go. I sit my iPad here, and you'll be able to read what's off the iPad. So let me just try this for a second. What I'll do is I'll throw something up. Excuse me, can you all see me still? I'll throw something up on the iPad and you should be able to, I'll just make the text bigger so that you can read it. I've got the text quite small. Let's put it on at about ooh, 60. Hang on two seconds. Select all, boom, 60. Yep, that's big. All right, that would be way too big for me, but I'll hit start. It is rolling. Ooh. Now, is that the right way around? Can anyone read that? Or is it back to front? Bill, help me out. Is it back to front? Back to front. Oh, sorry. Back to front. All right, I'll just twist it this way. Oh, damn. Series on. Two seconds. I just need to change the mirror horizontally. All right. Boom. It's heavy. All right, now that would be better. Is that better? Yep. I, I think you get the idea. So it's rolling and I would just be reading that. And now with, I'll take that down. Oh, oh. man, oh, I'm sweating here. And then this would just control it to start, to start and stop. So I'll just have a start and stop and that would control it. So the whole system, that whole ICANN system, you put your camera in the back of it, you use your iPad to mirror it off, it comes with the software, it comes with this, I think it's around 1200, I know I put 1500, but I think it's come down in price. That there, I would then get rid of the camera that I'm using here, the little Logitech camera, I would move that out the way, I put that camera behind, and I would just simply sit there looking straight into the camera and reading it. So all of my videos that I do professionally, and so I'll show you as an example, if I can bring up a, uh, a website here. Mm. Let me share that. Hang on two secs. Can you all see this one here? Waffles and whiskey. Yep, you can see that. So if we have a look at here, all these ones here, all these ones. So you can have a look at how many, you know, this has got 3.6 million views, 3 million views, 631,000 views, 262,000 views. But what's important here, it's like, it's like reading your newspaper. If you're flicking your pages of the newspaper and you read this, how dare you, I'm sure you all know what that's in reference to. So you would read that and you'll go, well, what's he saying about this? You would click onto that. And then that there, all these videos here, every single one of them, every one, even one of this one here, this one is one of my, um, it shouldn't be up there, I shouldn't be public, but this one I did nine years ago, and this is one of my workshops that I do dealing with hostile and aggressive people. This was all done on the, on the, uh, on the iPad here. So all these ones here were all me reading everything on here. But you'll notice why I said thumbnails are really important, it shows me all the time with a example of what I'm saying or what this is all about. So I'm not asking you to go in there and have a look at it. What I'm saying is that what's important is that they, the importance of a thumbnail and putting the thumbnail up as well as using the correct camera equipment with an eye, with a, with a teleprompter is going to save you so much time. So if you're a writer 
and you love writing stuff, but you're not a very good person who can remember things in the way that you've written it, then the, the iPad is going to, or the teleprompter is going to save you a, a bomb. And it's been for me, probably the best investment. And I know some have said, I'll never use it. I won't use it. And you probably won't. And then will come the day that we have, this is what's happening in the last six months. And you want to produce some videos. And now that you have to produce videos, you're sitting back going, I've got all this content. I've got all my PowerPoints and I've got everything that I want, but I want to read a quote out. And rather than me picking up a piece of paper and having to read that long three paragraph quote or what somebody said, you can look professional into the camera as if you know exactly word for word what that quote would be. So that's where it becomes important. How are we going on questions, Bill? All good at this stage. All good. Okay, cool. All right, we've just got a couple of more, uh, couple of more shots to go, and then we might open it up to uh, any questions. So here's the green screen kit, which uh, this was done. Kerry, this was your office. This is your office now. You probably noticed it now. But this whole green screen kit, look at the lights that we had here. So this is the lights that we had. This is the camera equipment that we have. Uh, this was um, uh, Rusty who was helping me out at the stage. Um, there's my little monitor on the top here. There's the camera sitting here. There's all the cords sitting down there. So we would then have the person sit in this little square box down there. And that person would then be stood reading the teleprompter doing their um, online course. And it worked, it worked brilliantly. But all this has been now replaced with just simply your iPad. It's just been replaced with your iPad. That's how simple it can be. So if you've got your iPad or your phone, and that's why I've gotten rid of all this stuff. I don't have lights anymore. Cameras are good enough not to have it unless you're in a particularly very bad room. So for example, I see Kim Laws as an example. Hey, Kim, just wave your hand. So what Kim has there is Kim has a very good, um, like you've got light at the back behind you, but you're darker is because what you have is backlight. There you would need a light in front of you to shine onto you so that you still get to see the background, but as well as you coming up light. The simple move that I would do there is you change your office around. You look into that big window. That big window gives you beautiful light and then you don't need to spend any money on light. And I think the, uh, the second, the last question, or the second, the last thing is that I have all these. So this here is a backdrop. This cost me $45 um, on eBay. So if you type in photographic backdrops, I've got a couple here, so I've got one here. You just pin them up on the wall. I'll throw them down as we do them. I have a fancy brick wall, $45. So for different settings. On this one here is Gold Coast setting. So it's like, uh, it's like you're watching the news and they've got the, the setting of the, the high rises in the background. And I have about six of those. But again, you don't need six. The one on the bottom here, so you see the library one, I have that one, I've used that a few times. Um, and also that warehousey one, the warehousey one is actually behind this one here. And they're really tough vinyl. I just get a couple of pins, I pin it up into the masonry wall. And hey, if you're, if you're a renter, no one's gonna see that little pinhole. It sits up there, you can pull it out, Bob's your uncle. Great, great little investment. It just sets the scene. It just sets it. This is, this is my scene. This is what it looks like here. All right, and then the last one, I think we've got production software. I spoke about this, the um, Adobe After Effect. That's expensive, but you don't need to go that far. We're going to go into this on the 27th. This is free software. It's using Open Broadcast System. I'm gonna show you that, how it works, we will go live. Kerry, I'm sure you're familiar with this little baby here. So if you get really serious and you want to be able to set something up, this is a purpose-built studio, cost two grand. Of course, um, Kerry knows that where it's situated in the side, but we, this is where we used to do our interviews. You don't need to do that, but we wanted to do it professionally. We wanted to set up it up as a studio. And of course, this is what uh, it does look like. In fact, the table here that I'm using, this table here is the table that we use there. And that was, I can't think of his name from Genos, um, but he did a session there about emotional intelligence and it was great. So that was the setup, don't need to use that anymore. Or 
like I've got here, you can simply use your home. Whiskey is not included. That is in a nutshell, we've done about, I think just over an hour. I think I've extended your time. I do apologize, I don't like going over time. I know some of you have asked some questions, but if you have anything that you would like to ask, um, all the PowerPoints that I've just showed you here, I will make available for Kerry and Kerry, you can send those out. Um, of course, if anyone has any further questions or says, well, Gerald, it all sounds all too hard. Can you help me out? Can you do it with me, for me? Help me out. I'm sure we can just have a chat and we could work something out, I'm, I'm sure. You know, we're all busy people. And um, just there's give Kerry. Yes. There's a question here in the, uh, in the chat box uh, relating to the teleprompter. And it says, can you use a teleprompter with a webcam or only with, with the DSLR or similar camera? Yeah, providing that you put the webcam behind the teleprompter. Right. Yep, so, what I'll do is I'll actually take off the camera. So there's the camera, now the camera's off. Mm -hmm. So the camera is off. And what you have, oops. I don't know if you can see that. There's a hole in there. Mm -hmm. And your 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 webcam would go in there. So the answer is yes. <laughs> okay, good stuff, Gerald. Thank you for that. That was uh, amazing uh, with all the stuff you shared. What I'd like to do now is is throw it open to uh, to people for questions. Um, and I think that you know it's okay if you want to just unmute yourself and and go ahead and ask the question. Let's get a little bit of. Uh, gallery view going and um, and maybe um, go ahead and um, and ask some questions if anybody has any it's good when they don't have questions i don't got a question you know mate. how are you buddy hey good and well mate good my long time since i last saw you and this is my question i suppose is i know we're getting ahead of ourselves but how did you become a youtube megastar what's the secret in becoming a youtube megastar don't take yourself serious at all like seriously, those people that go out there and they start promoting themselves and they go, I'm, a, I'm an influencer. You know, I want to be able to get thousands of people. My goal was to talk to my father. Seriously, and pe there's, and the, my theory is still the same. There's 7 billion people out there in the world. Hmm. Okay, 7 billion. Someone's got to be interested in your crap. <laughs> <laughs> and it just so happens that there are 80,000 people, you know, and, and if I get 3 million views for, you know, talking to some person who's my father, and somebody wants to watch in, you kind of like go, yeah, it's, it's interesting. If you, if you really start to market yourself, I'm sure you can. Like, I'm sure you can. You did no marketing? You did no marketing? None. No, 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 this is what I call, no nothing. All, all organic. Wow. All Brilliant. organic. In fact, in fact, I got 40,000 subscribers in one week after doing one video. Jeez. Yeah, in one week. And I don't know what happened. It just went crazy. And I still get monetized for that video that I did. I still get money from that video. And it's probably the thing that's keeping me alive. Good on you, man. Well done. Well I done, buy, buddy. I can buy some sardines at the end of the week. Oh, well done. It was a great session. Thanks. Thanks, mate. Hey, G-Man, it's Joshua here. Sorry, I can't get my camera going today. But can you address mistakes? I learned some big lessons from you about getting past the perfectionism and making mistakes and either editing it out in, in post-production and doing the, the choppy edits. Um, but how do people get past that perfectionism and, oh, I can't get it perfect and move through their mistakes? Yeah, the day that you start becoming the perfectionism is the day you're going to run into a lot of problems. Like um, the, the, I have a tagline when I do my waffles and whiskey um, on a Saturday is because I'm trying to work everything out. The mic's not working. This ain't working. Nothing's going right. And I say to everyone who's watching me live, and there'll be a thousand people on, and I'll say, hey, people, I'm not a producer. And so the tagline is, G-Man, not a producer. And I think once you start taking yourself seriously and you get stressed out about it, mistakes will happen. And I even say to them, I go, well, this session's no good. Just get off. I go. Like, you're wasting your time here. It's 7 o'clock. Go and drink whiskey somewhere else. I'm obviously not going to help you. Go. And they all stay. <laughs> it's like because they, people like, I think for me, they just like it that they know I'm talking to my father. It's not me talking to you and having to become professional. I'm talking to my dad. 
And I actually, I actually say to him, Dad, what do you think about this? Or I call him Rudy. I say, Rudy, what do you think about this? It's crazy, isn't it? He doesn't respond. He doesn't talk. He doesn't chat. I just know he's there and we have a chat after. So perfectionism is going to kill you, Joshua, in the metaphorical term, not literal. Yeah, Gerald. Okay, good one, thanks. Sorry. Um, Gerald, several years ago, I was doing a how-to series on how to make flower arrangements. Yes. And I had one. It's, it's a flower arrangement in an old box. I have no idea why this happened, but over 70,000 people have viewed it. It's crazy, isn't it? And yet I've got a whole bunch of other flower arrangements that are probably better and nowhere near the number of views. So it's random. They really number love the box. <laughs> it's, it's probably the box, but I'll tell you what it is also. I'll tell you what's really important is that um, you're not, you put something up there which was flower arrangement in a box. That's mm. how simple it was, right? Yeah. And, and there'd be, there, there is a crew of people who just go, I want to know how to do that. Yeah. Like I'm going to a wedding or I'm going to a funeral or I'm going to a baby shower and they go, I don't know, flower arranging, and then yours pops up. And once you get 10,000 views, it's going to start being a recommended one. And then it just mm -hmm. keeps increasing. Yeah. So that's how that happens. Yeah, it is random. And then all of a sudden, I'll put something up. Like, I think I'll put something up really important about bullying in the workplace. Mm -hmm. I'm really important. 37 views. Yeah, exactly. No one cares. Yeah. Like, oh, this, no, this is, you need to watch this. Mm -hmm. And I get 37 views. And then I'll do something else, like how to fold unfitted sheets. Or no, how to fold fitted sheets. Mm -hmm. I had 100,000 views. And I go, seriously? <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty important thing though I yeah mean, but when you watch me fold them <laughs> it's not very important at all it's, it's probably a whole lot smarter than the way my husband and i fold them yeah no it's not I tell you, it's not gerald um one of the things you mentioned there is monetize how do you monetize what you're doing on youtube once you have a thousand subscribers it happens automatically because you've got to sign up for google then you sign up for youtube and then what happens is they ask you, once you get a thousand participants or subscribers or followers, they're going to ask you, do you want to AdSense this? And you just tick the box in YouTube that says AdSense. If you're here on the 27th, I'll show you how to do that. That's just a box. It just says tick. And then it says, where do you want to place the ads? At the beginning, in the middle, at the end. And you just go put all the ads in. Just uh, thanks for that. And, and to, you're talking about the 27th, which will be in Brisbane. Yep. Are you going to be able to stream that? I can stream it, yep. That's, that's good. So, because yep. we've got a, another session on the 28th, another masterclass yep. on the 28th. Cool. We'll make this one uh, available as well. That's terrific. And can I ask, this is probably a basic question, but how do you get into a live stream? I've actually had two or three that I've registered for and not been able to attend. Uh, through YouTube? Okay. Uh, was it, no, no. So when you say I want to get into a, a live stream, you mean like here on Zoom or do you mean like on YouTube or something? Uh, someone was supposedly doing something on LinkedIn and they were meant to, it was meant to be live streamed. Couldn't get in. If you ever have something with a live stream, always ask that person, what's the link? Yeah. The, there are a bunch of us that tried on that one, but okay. Oh, oh okay. Mm. Maybe on, if you're in, if you're in, uh, in Brisbane, um, I'm going to run through all that. I'll show you the whole thing. In fact, if we, if we, we, Kerry, we will live stream it and we'll just go through each of the process of what you need to do to be able to live stream it. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you want to see a live stream uh, that's happening at 5.30 tonight, Yana Martins does 5.30 every uh, Wednesday night, a live stream where she interviews somebody. Um, and it's, it's quite active and she has uh, thousands of uh, followers as well. Cool. Um, but uh, just Yana, Y-A-N-A, -A, Martins, uh, M-A-R-T-E-N-S mm -hmm. uh, under YouTube. And uh, uh, she promotes it on LinkedIn. Uh, but you just click on and you can join in. I don't think there's any um, registration process or anything. Um, I, I have a quick question, Gerald. Thank you. Go for it. Um, I'm very keen to use the video um, concept now um, outside Zoom. What would be my your recommendation for a starting point to go, you know, the first three steps that would just kick it off um, for me and make, and make it, um, accessible and easy and, and push me out of the, the, the Zoom screen into the video screen. So the first thing I would do is that I would just put a video together. Yep. But that's it. And you've got a lovely setting, actually, Ricky. That's a really lovely mm. setting where you're, mm -hmm. where you're at. I would just add a little bit more light on your face, just a little bit more. If you can get even like a house light, 
would be cool. Uh, I've got beautiful lighting. Um, That's beautiful. That's a great setting. It looks fantastic. It does not use screen, so it's fun. No. And you'll notice the other thing that I'm looking at for everyone else is you see how much space there's between me and the top of the screen? There's only this much. So when I see you, Ricky, you're down here and you've got a lot more space up here. Get rid of that. You want to be further up here. Yep. You, don't want, you don't want any space. Yeah, you don't want any of that stuff. So the idea is just do one. As Joshua said, you just do one for the bin, yep. for the can. And okay. then you watch it. And then you go over it and you go, that was cool. And then you upload it and you're cool. Just, I mean, you'll be amazed. People yep. sometimes don't want perfection. They want content with yep. all your ums and ahs and okays and your foibles. They mm -hmm. just want your content. And if you're real, that's what they'll want. Timing, three to five minutes is a good, a good start. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Three to five minutes. And you'll actually see, like Joe Rogan, who I watch, does an hour and a half, pod, an hour and a half podcast, and the guy gets 30 million views every single day for an hour and a half. Who's got time to watch an hour and a half? He, but, just, sold it, he just sold it to Spotify for a couple of million, I think. He did too. Yeah, 20 million. 20 million to Spotify. 20, mate. To Spotify, correct. Jerry, just quickly, you didn't mention one thing of all. One of you do on, um, on September the 27th. Captioning. Now, captioning is very important because a lot of people do have the sound off and yeah. they watch. Now, um, there is a particular YouTube can do it on the fly. There's other software. I've uh, bought a foundation membership to Subly, which I think is really good. I only paid about $10, which uh, codes the, the captions in. Yeah, hang on, just two seconds. Just two seconds. Can yep. you chat amongst yourself? Just two seconds, people. I've just got someone here. Remember, I'm selling you my bike. Hang on two yep. seconds. Stay there. Chat yep. amongst yourself, Kerry. <laughs> Gerald. <laughs> yeah, so who does who does captioning? Anyone do captioning? I've just started using rev.com. Yeah. Okay. It's very yep. cheap and it's, it turns around in in you know 12 hours or so. It costs you about two dollars. I, I just did something for a blog I wrote and it cost yep. me two dollars. That's where you send it offshore, don't you? And they, they send it back. You just upload your video, what yep. you've done, and it comes back with the captions on it. Um, I went through rev.com. It was super and really cheap. One of the, things, uh, yeah. one of the things, Con, that uh, and on our on our website, um, Lyndall Box has got her accessibility uh, webinar on there. And when she was running it, she was doing it through Google Docs um, and through Zoom, but with Google Docs in the background. And Google Docs uh, automatically uh, captions the things and then because it doesn't get it perfect, you then download it and, and uh, just make a few uh, spelling corrections and things like that. There's an iOS app called Clips too that does it too for you too. I know YouTube can do it also. So, you can, Joe, you're back. What, what do you yeah. think with captioning? What's your views? I do, I, I love captioning. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Some people like to just sit there. And it, it's, it's interesting, even when I'm reading captions and the person's speaking English, I still read it. Yeah. Because it gives you, it gives you that just that uh, I don't know what it's that comfort or that I don't know. But yeah, I like the captions. Um, it's a great thing to have. Yeah, I don't do any of them. I don't have any captions on mine um, at all. But I can always add them in through that OBS system. And please, people, if you if you really want to do this and make it look professional, even play with it now. Go into OBS. It's um open broadcast system it's a free software and then go onto youtube and type in beginner's guide to obs and then you don't have to turn up to my session <laughs> yeah kerry mentioned this one to us a while ago remember this kerry one of our lounges and i've been, In fact, uh, I, talk, been I talked kerry the other day yeah no yeah i've been experimenting with it for a while yeah yeah it's yeah. pretty good i'm so excited because like i only had like 90 minutes with gerald and yeah i can produce my own videos so if somebody that's a little bit tech phobic like me um, yeah, I was super excited. So, and it's one of those ones you keep playing and keep adding to it. So I'm actually for the session on the 27th, I'm going to share a video that I put together. So to show people what I was able to do after 90 minutes. Yeah. Any last questions for Gerald before we, uh, we say thank you? Well, how do we get in touch with him? That's the most important thing. Oh, uh, right. look, um, Kerry, you've got all the information, don't you? You've got all the details. I'll be sending my... Um, see, this is the thing I'm not good at, Con. This is something I'm, I'm never good at. I'm trying to help you, mate. I'm trying to help you. No, uh, this is, I'm really not good at the, oh, and don't forget, jump onto this website and sign up here and do all, just, you Gerald Porschman, just type it in Google and you'll see my prison record. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's there somewhere. Exactly. Page, right. page well, seven. Gerald, 
Gerald, as, as we've obviously had a great time uh, with you. And so thank you very, very much for, for doing that. Cool, man. Um, and uh, there's lots there. And, and I'm looking super excited to see you on the 27th again as well. So I hope uh, you'll probably see a lot of people back for that as well. Uh, so thank you for that. Um,